Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that deck profile subscribe button and that like button so we can climb even further beyond the 1100 ladder. We're almost at 1,200 subscribers, ladies and gentlemen, 1,178 right now, to be exact. I really do appreciate all the support. If you don't mind, I don't preach this often, but would you mind hitting that ding-dong Taco Bell notification bell? I haven't mentioned that recently. I would really appreciate it if you could be part of the A-Gang notification squad. You know you want to be part of the A-Gang. We're going to be putting the letter A up at YCS's. <laughs> And that's how we know who's going to be the A-gang. Anyway, I probably sound cringy as hell, but I would really appreciate it if you hit that bell. So, I was looking around on the internets and surfing the webs like it's 1996, the year I was born. <laughs> and I was trying to figure out what the hell do I want to cover uh, for today's video. And I figured that the best thing to cover would be doing a deck profile on uh, a deck that I feel like a lot of my subscribers are actually really interested in. And so I figured that a great deck profile to cover would be Cyber Dragons. And so let's talk about that. So Lucas Peterson covered this build on TCG Player a few days ago, and I thought it'd be interesting to talk about because I do feel like Cyber Dragon is a bit of a sleeper deck this format with how it can OTK and how it can OTK specifically a lot more consistently than other decks can. I feel like rank 8 Axis, as great of a rank 8 spam, build my board, break your board deck that it is, it also lives and dies by the dangers it plays. And so I feel like a deck like Cyber Dragons can OTK much more consistently and it can potentially go first, but you really don't want to focus on that. You want to focus on going second. And I'm not going to be like the other YouTubers who, de who do deck profiles and say at the very end of the video, hey, uh, I don't have a side deck. I'm going to show you right here. I don't got no side. You can make the side however you want. I don't know shit about fucking Cyber Dragons. I don't know how to fuck to build a side for this. So I'm going to tell you now, in case that bothers you, I'm not going to be like all these purely deck profiles where I don't show off my side deck because I got some spice. Oh my God, I got some spice. Even though by fucking round three everyone's gonna know what the fuck you're playing anyway i had to get that out of my system let's dive on into this shall we we're playing three kaijus uh two jacuzuru one lightning strike um the jacuzuru thunders the lightning strikes just a different kaiju name so if you give them the jacuzuru you can drop out a fat ass uh lightning strike and proceed to whoop they ass uh then we're playing three copies of cyber dragon this is the best artwork don't at me we're playing two copies of galaxy soldier uh the reasoning behind this uh from the article and also just because from what i've seen of this deck you already play enough cards that aren't named Cyber Dragon. You don't need to bulk down on three copies of Galaxy Soldier. We're not playing Constell or Pleiades for a reason. If you want to do that, you have to design your build to be a more going first build and hope that the opponent doesn't break your board. And there are a lot of ways to build Cyber Dragons. You can make it more of a going first build instead of a going second build. But I feel like if you're just trying to go second and OTK the opponent, which I feel is the best way to play Cyber Dragons, you only need two Galaxy Soldiers. Summon the first one out, ditch to get you the second one, summon out the next one, make a Nova, make an Infinity, proceed to whoop that ass. Then we are playing one copy of Cyberdark Chimera. Get you to Power Bond. That's all you need to know. <laughs> we're playing three copies of Core because it's good. Uh, two copies of Nashter. Uh, you ditch one of the monster to summon it from your hand. And if it's normal special summon, you get a Cyber Dragon back, basically. Uh, and then we're playing three copies of hers. And that's it for the monsters. No hand traps, nothing like that. You're probably wondering, well, why not at least play Droll or something? You're a going second OTK deck. And similar to something like Rank 8 Axis or like whatever kind of Grimmage deck you want to play... You really don't need to play hand traps. Like, why do you care about using hand traps to stop the opponent from building a board when you're just going to break apart the board anyway? Like, it, it really doesn't matter. Hence why we're playing things like Triple uh, Lightning Storm. One Overload Fusion, three Lightning Storm, one Rev System, because it's literally a monster reborn. Uh, one copy of Power Bond, just, uh, you know, don't lose like the people do in the anime. Uh, three copy of Cyber Emergency, such a good card. Uh, three Machine Dupe, yeah, to this day, to this day, I've seen people online call a judge whenever someone summons out a cyber dragon core and activate machine dupe to get out cyber dragon no oh, you can't do that its name is treated as cyber dragon sugar boo bear you can go for cyber dragon uh and then we got one copy of repair plant that's really all you need one copy of call by the grave three copies of super poly because super poly is always a disgusting card this card will never be power corrupt one copy of cyber load fusion one cyber dark world three clockwork knight and then one cybernetic overflow such a broken card so clockwork knight is actually really funny too because i've seen some super heavy samurai builds uh side decking this and some people using this to beat super heavy samurai because you can go kaiju whatever sort of negate that they have like spell canceler whatever uh or baron de fleur activate clockwork knight everything on the field becomes machines you drop out cyber dragon you proceed to make a chimera tech fortress dragon like it's 2010 all over again and you proceed to play with yourself and laugh it's really hilarious 
Uh, we're playing one copy of All Mirage, one Link Karibo, one Zeger, uh, one Nova with the one Infinity, one copy of Zeus, one Mud Dragon, one Chimera Tech Rampage, one Garua, double Mega Fleet with uh, the one Twin Dragon. Um, I'm sorry, this is double Mega Fleet, double Fortress Dragon, excuse me. Uh, and then the one Cyber End. Um, what do I think about this deck overall? I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to bullshit you. I really don't know much about Cyber Dragon other than I think it top aided one regional a couple months ago. To me, that does say it's a sleeper deck of the format. Is it considered rogue? Honestly, no. Because even if you go into this, like ignoring whatever kind of side you decide to make, I, I leave that up to you, the viewer. If you're going in against purely and you're going second deck, you really only have three cards to get rid of the Noir. They don't give a shit about Lightning Storm. Their card is going to be in defense anyway. You can't super poly the Noir if it's got five more materials. Um, you can't change everything to machine because again, Noir is still unaffected by activated effects. And even if you try to play this, they could potentially just bounce it at the bottom of your deck anyway. I feel like possibly it would be better to build it going first, depending on the setting. Like if you're just going to play this for locals, you could play this build and be fine. Hell, you could build this as a going first build where you play triple prosperity and triple theory on King Regulus or even just two copies and just go from there. Like that's a reason why we're not playing prosperity in this is mainly because of you don't want your damage being cut in half. That really hurts you when you're trying to go for an OTK. And I've noticed that even in like purely too. You know, I was play testing Pot of Prosperity and purely when I was first messing around with the deck and getting your damage cut in half really sucks when you're on the back foot going second, especially in a deck like purely that really just doesn't want to go second um and so i think because of that really you just can't afford to play prosperity hitting that one of six isn't really the best thing in the world and also with cards like diabolsis running around you don't want to be hitting your extra deck more than you need to anyway even in this i mean diabolsis is most likely going to hit either the infinity or the zeus just to deny you the ability to even get to it um, I almost kind of wish that Lucas Peterson would have put in a second copy of Zeus, maybe take out like the Link Aribo and put in Zeus, but yet you need a way um, to, well, this doesn't even stop the uh, Nightmare Corruptor Ibley if they're playing it, so you'd have to use the All Mirage. Uh, well, even then, that's got to be normal summon. Yeah, never mind. I'm, I'm going to shut my mouth now because you have no way to play through fucking Ibley in this deck if the Kashtira deck's playing Ibley. So, yeah, you'd have to probably take out the Link Karibo for a Link Aribo to actually have a way to out Ibley, if Ibley is still a thing whenever you're playing this deck, depending on when you see this video. But those are just some of my thoughts. I, I still feel that this deck is a fantastic sleeper deck, especially if you're playing on a budget. I mean, how much would you even have to pay for this deck? Like, Zeus's are 25s. Um, you could get three copies of the cyber dark structure deck and like you pretty much get almost all this stuff you'd have to pay out a little bit for lightning storms but those are what 10 a piece so you're looking at 30 plus like let's say 25 for zeus yeah for like 110 maybe 150 if you're really pushing it the clockwork uh knights are like five six bucks a piece so like what 130 maybe to build this whole thing not counting aside like that's not bad ladies and gentlemen especially if you just want to play at your locals and not have a big investment i do feel like you should always be preparing for like a regional or ycs or something but that's the competitiveness in me talking there's obviously i'm sure people who watch my videos who only play at locals and that's okay too you can play whatever you want at your locals and and have a good time if you want to go to that next level being competitive then yeah you bust out the wallet and you make the changes that need to be made so that you have the ability to succeed to the best of your ability and that your deck can do so guys let me know what you think down in the comments below how would you cyber dragon fans change up this deck um yeah I'm, I'm really curious to know because i really do feel like that this is a sleeper deck thank you guys for watching i will see you in the next video